Glory to God. Why don't you thank him for loving you? Oh, bless his holy name. Oh, my God. Because so often we take his love for granted. But then there's come a time that we need to let God know that we appreciate him. And we really thank him for loving us. You know, when we realize the day and the time that we're living in. And that the devil is doing everything that he can to destroy and to trick people. And for the most part, the devil is, is being successful in this endeavor. But we thank God that God has never left himself without a witness. Let me read a passage of scripture tonight. According to the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse, as if for in him we live and we move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offsprings of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by arts and man's device. Now let's look at verse 30. And the time of this ignorance, God winked at. But now, look at your neighbor and say, but now. <clears throat> commanded all men everywhere to repent. You can be seated. I want to deal with a little bit tonight in talking about the deception of religion. Because our society is inundated with false preachers, false teachers. And therefore, if you got false preachers, you got false teachers, you got false prophets, you got false doctrine. So there's no way that they can be proclaimers of truth and are false. But somebody has to stand up and declare the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you know, it's becoming a, a common saying that it's just hard to find the truth. And that it is. You know, Amos knew what he was talking about. Said that there was going to be a famine in the land, not for food or drink, but for the hearing of the word of God. <clears throat> and someone would say that could not be so because you got churches on base in every corner. In our little small community, you got somewhere all over. In the neighborhood of 30 churches in this little small, and I'm not talking about a 30 or 40 mile radius. I'm talking about if you do a three mile radius, you got that many churches. Some, some of them Baptists and Baptists don't have nothing to do with Baptists. You know, this is a messed up society. They got one street you can go up and and almost hit three Baptist churches. <clears throat> you know that's messed up. <clears throat> but nevertheless, my point is that folks will say that could not be so because everywhere you look, you got churches. You have 24-hour television with preaching and, and all of this stuff. You got preachers on there around the clock. But Amos did not miss it. 
There's a famine for the hearing of the word of God. And our religious society is gravitating to deception. Because they don't want a real relationship with God. And all this here new age foolishness and all of this junk that does not have a profound effect on men and women's lives. There's no way that you can come in contact with truth. There's no way that you can be receptive of the truth of God's word and remain the same. But because of this easy believism, folks are buying into lives. But they don't understand. David didn't just say, let everything that had bread praise ye the Lord. But David said, forever, O oh God, is thy word settled in the heaven. And see, that's the part that they tend to forget. Because God's word is forever settled in the heaven. And in our religious society, they're seeking to change the word of God. We have been instructed not to add to, not to take away from. At least thou be, be reproved in, thou be found a liar. John the Revelator said, at least I come and add unto you the plagues that are written in the books of Revelation. And this is a society that have no fear of God. But yet they profess that they love him. But let me tell you something. You cannot love God and not obey God. You cannot love God and obey God. That's why you can't be a sister and, and, and love God. That's why you, and let, let me just break it down. You can't be a whoremonger. You cannot live an immoral life and love God. So where do you come up with that, preacher? Well, I come up with what Jesus said. In St. John 14 and 15, he said, if you love me, this is the proof that you love God, that you'll keep his commandment. You'll find yourself being obedient to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And this is what has happened in this day and time. My God, you know, technology doesn't ta have taken over. You know, technology is good in its place. And people don't even go to church with a Bible. I'm looking at my iPhone. I'm looking at my smartphone. My God, I'm trying to follow the preacher. But you, you know, you don't have far to go because they, they just read a scripture and shut the book. Or quote a scripture and shut the book. But no, 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 no. The Bible says such the scripture. So we need to let this word be line upon line, precept upon precept. I got here a little and down a little. We don't just need a one, one scripture. When we come, to the house of God, we come to hear the word of God. We are not coming to hear my philosophy, my ideology. You are not coming to hear no other preacher ideology that their philosophy. You're coming to hear the unadulterated gospel of God, of the word of God. When the people came before the water gate in the book of Nehemiah, they said unto Ezra the scribe, bring unto us the book of the laws of Moses. We want the word of God. We don't want no foolishness. We don't want what you feel or what you think. We want to know what the Bible has to say. We want to know what God has spoken unto Moses. The command that God has given unto Moses. We don't want this other foolishness. And now people are willfully deceived. Because they don't want... You know, they, they want to be intimate with God, but they don't want to have or uh, uh, to do what it takes to have an intimate relationship with God. You cannot be intimate with God. You cannot, because you, you go to church, because your name is, is on someone's church roll, does not constitute a relationship with God. Matter of fact, when Jesus came into this temple, the devil was sitting in the chair. And the devil wanted to know, why did you come to torment us before our time? 
The devil goes to church, but the devil don't want to hear the truth. And this is why people are trying to find a church that's not biblically based. You got preachers today that don't believe all of the word of God. They don't believe it. They, the, when you, call, you talk about St. John 5 and 48, they don't believe that. When it comes down to be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, because these devils have not committed their lives unto God, you come on and talk to me up in here, because they have not given all of themselves over to God. They have not presented their body as a living sacrifice unto God. Then they say, can't nobody live like that. And let me, let me give you the, what they quote, and let, you know, they, what they say. They say that God understands that we, we're only human. And I say amen to that. But God understood that you were only human, that you needed some more help. And so this is why he sent his son. And this is why his son gave his life. And now he, he sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now to let us know that, hey, if I can live a holy and righteous life in this sinful flesh, in this house of clay, you can live it also. But see, I, I'm doing it with the help of God. And so you can do it with the help of God. The Bible said I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Come on and bless him, somebody. Oh, glory to God. When we come to God, I realize that I cannot do this thing on my own. You know, Paul said, you know, in Romans 7, he was giving a testimony. He said, I, I, I wanted to do right. But I just didn't have the power. See, every, every time I wanted to do good, evil was always present. And the evil that I would not, that's what I found myself doing. And, and so he come to a conclusion and said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of sin and death? Then he finally said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to bless him. Oh, oh, glory to God. I thank God through Jesus Christ. My God, thank God that God gave his son. His son gave his life, and I'm glad I received him into my heart. Therefore, I can do all things through him that strengthened me. It's sad when people are saying that they're Christian and don't have the victory. No, no. The Bible says somewhere in there that we are more than conquerors. Only through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Now, God, you're going to make his dying be in vain that I have to still continue in sin. Now, God, even though Christ was sacrificed, he was that sacrificial lamb. My God, that shed his blood on Calvary cross and I can't be delivered from sin. No, no, no. No, we got to live a life that's going to glorify God. We got to live a life that's going to bring glory to his name. Come on and talk to me. The Bible said they shall behold Christ in us, the hope of glory. I got somebody that's sitting in darkness got to see a great light. And that great light is Jesus Christ. My God, shining through us. I got, and I'm just glad just to be saved. And I'm just glad. Now I'm not worried about a mega church. I'm not worried about all these other false churches. My God, because if they were preaching the truth, the devil will leave. Let me tell you something. You said, Elder Tom, how can I know the real from the false? Look at the people. Look at the people. Now watch this here. When they brought that woman that was caught in the very act of adultery, the Bible does not give us a new numerical number of the people that came to bring her. But we know that some people came and they brought her. And, and so now, and others, bystanders were coming. We want to see what's going to take place. So now, Jesus, they've done, talk to Jesus. They want to get super spiritual now under Moses' law. Says she should be stoned. That being said, that the reason being because we caught her in the very act. We called her messing up. 
So the, the thing about it is Moses' law said if, if, if they're doing that, you bring the man and the woman. So if you caught him in the act, where's the man? Why are you just going to bring the poor woman? Because she, she couldn't commit adultery by herself. So where's the man? And when people were saying, you know, Jesus stooped down and wrote in the sand, I don't care what Josephus and none of the others say, I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. I believe Josephus, I mean, Jesus wrote in the sand, where's the man? Because they spoke under Moses' law. And Moses' law said, you bring the man and the woman, so where is the man? And the Bible said, one by one, they began to leave. And then finally, Jesus looked at her and said, woman, where are thine accusers? And she said, there are none. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Now, but you got to do something here. You got to go and sin no more. Whatever they caught you doing, don't you do that no more. And now, the, and the Bible tells us, says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It said, God forbid. And how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, you suppose, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be dead to sin. Now, Christian is, is not one that practices sin. Because if you practice in sin, you're a sinner. If you are practicing sin, that there's no such thing as a carnal Christian. I don't care what Dr. Bolo said. I, I don't care what the big neck bishop said. I don't care what none of these false folks said. I want to tell you what, what says the scripture. I got news for you. God is not overlooking sin. God looking at our sin and he going to hold us accountable. And then the one thing about it, his eyes is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. He sees when we're living righteous and holy and godly in this present world. He sees when we're messing up. He sees in every aspect of sin. God sees us. And all of these Christians that caught up in, in all this, this, this cyber mess. You know, you know, the, you're caught up in pornography on, on, on the internet. Come on, talk back to me. All of this stuff that you're doing behind closed door. And you think nobody knows, but I got news for you. His eyes is in every place. And he's beholding the good and the evil. Bishop. That's why Tim's dead now. Because he's in the hotel room. Nobody else knows what he's doing. But God knows what he was doing. And so he's not the only one that's messing up. It's some of these other big name devils messing up. But I got news for you. According to the scripture. Be sure. Your sins are going to find you out. And so it's just a matter of time, King David, that somebody is going to pull your chain. Somebody going to let you know that, hey, you didn't get away with what you done. God's eyes is in every place. And so it's time for us to make sure that our relationship with God is genuine. That we love him out of a pure heart fervently. That we're not playing church. My God, I got a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And I don't want to do anything that's going to bring my reproach on the holiness of God. We live in a society according to Proverbs 14, 12 and 16, 25. There's a generation, I mean, there's generation that appear in their own eyes, yet they are not washed from their filthiness. You know, people are still caught up in, in their junk. They, they still haven't given themselves totally unto God. And so now somebody got to stand up and somebody got to declare the whole counsel of God. You know, as I said, uh, I quoted Proverbs 30 and 12, but in, in 16 and 25 and 14 and 12, that the, these people, but they are not washed from their filthiness. People are professing that they know God, but they have not been washed from their filthiness. People are saying that I love him, but they have not been washed from their filthiness. And, and so is something wrong, my God, with, with the, 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 the religions of today? We got to have the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And I got news for you. Let me tell you something. 
The Bible said in the beginning what the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the same was in the beginning with God. And so this word has not changed. And when you look at Jesus Christ, our God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed and he will not change. The word was made flesh and it dwelt among us in the persons of Jesus Christ. It's not going to change. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not going to change. There's no shortcuts, my God, to the holiness of God. There, there are no shortcuts, my God, to the righteousness of God. <clears throat> but when we're loving God with all, with our whole heart, my God, then we're giving our, our all of us to, uh, to God. It, it, it seems like it's right. It don't seem like anything wrong with it. It, it, it seems like it, it don't seem like it, nothing wrong with a woman bobbing a hell. No, no, you going to hell. Because your hair was given to you for your glory. All you're doing is, is fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Now God, you're doing what your flesh want to do. And, and you think God going to let you into heaven with your bald head? I don't care if you don't ever like it. And this is why we, our lives have to line up with every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. My God, Deuteronomy 8 and 3 has not changed, neither had Matthew 4 and 4, nor Luke 4 and 4, that man should not live by bread alone, not by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We got to live by every word. Bless him, somebody. This is the day and time that you, as holiness and righteousness, my God, you ought to be, be glad to be holy. You ought to be glad to be sanctified. You ought to be glad to be called out of darkness into the marvelous light. You ought to be glad to have a lifestyle change. Bless him, somebody. What is a lifestyle change? I'll tell you exactly what it is. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become brand new. When I look at Romans 6, 1 and 2, the question is, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Oh, uh, no, no, no. God forbid. And how shall we that are dead to sin? Live any longer therein. My God, you got to be dead to sin. Listen. In our society, we have been instructed. Give me Matthew 24. And I wanted to read the first four verses. Because if we don't get back to the Bible... And stop trying to follow all of this stuff in the church. Now, no, let, let just, go ahead and read that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Holy. It was Jesus that said, take heed. That no man deceive you. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let nobody trick you. Come on and talk to me. When you got the big neck bishop, my God, when they asked him, say, is homosexuality wrong? So what does the scripture say? That let you know he's not God's man. When you got Joel and Victoria on there, it, it says homosexuality is wrong. I don't deal with political matters. That lets you know that he's not God's man. Because the real man of God, oh my God, he would have stood up and boldly said, the scripture said, The devil had better sense than that. In Matthew 4, at least he was trying to quote scripture. He wasn't around and said, what does the Bible say? He was saying it's written. He was quoting him some Psalms. He was quoting what David had said. He was quoting it. But they talking about what does the Bible say? The devil said, listen, it's written. But Jesus said, you misinterpreted. 
No, no, it's written also that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so we got to know what the Bible said. God, they that love the Lord and they that are called of God shall speak the word of God. They are not going alone, my God, to get along. My God, they are not compromising. My God, this unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, but they're standing up with boldness and declare whole counsel. Take heed that no man deceive you. Give me Second Peter chapter 2. We want to begin reading at verse 1. Wait a minute. There were false prophets among the people. Come on. Now we got false prophets and false teachers who privately going to come in and bring in damnable heresies. Come on. Now let, let, let's, let's talk about this. Now you got false prophets. You got false, you got false teachers. So guess what they're going to teach? Destructive. Damnable teaching. False doctrine. And so they're going to preach that that's going to sound good to your ears. But it's not going to deliver your soul. How God, you, you trying to find the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah 5 verse 1. He said run through the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know. And see if you can find a man. Not a woman. A man. My God that's going to execute judgment. We need somebody that's going to stand up. And preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on and talk to me up in here. Oh, bless him, somebody. My God, we're living in the last days. My God, when there are false teachers, there are false, my God, false, false prophets. And you got false apostles. Well, John the Revelator said, I tried them to say they were the apostles that are not. And I found them liars. You found them false. And you find all of these people that won't put the trumpet to their mouth. I got, they won't, I got, he didn't say you a, a piccolo. He didn't say a clarinet. He said a trumpet. My God, what a blast of the trumpet. My God, I got, so it, it'll rouse somebody. It'll shake somebody. Come on and talk to me. And when you put the trumpet to your mouth, my God, you blow it. You blow it. You don't care who it hit. You don't care who it hurt. My God, you just trying to deliver somebody's soul. My God, that somebody's soul might be saved. My God, when I look at the word of God, the Bible said in St. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Somebody ought to bless him right there. My God, the only thing that's going to set you free is the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. My God, it's not a lie. It's not of all of these old preachers, my God, that same, my God, take you into two praise service. After the praise team to finish, then the preacher going, yeah, 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 yeah. I got trying to get there. I got working on folks' emotion. Uh, uh, no, no. I just keep, I can't help but to ask the question. You reckon Jesus preached like these folks today? Because he was trying to get people cleansed. According to St. John 15 and 3, you are cleansed through the words that I have spoken unto you. My God, we need to preach truth. My God, this is what it's going to take. My God, to break yokes in men's and women's lives. My God, folks are bound in their sins and their transgression. And somebody got to tell it. So we'll bring them into a place of repentance. False Prophets, false teachers, and they coming in with damnable heresies, destructive teaching, destructive doctrine, false doctrine. Oh, it sounds good. You know why? Because it appeals to your flesh. 
Because your flesh don't want to die. Now God, just like Jesus' flesh, when it came down to Calvary, his flesh didn't want to die. It did not want to go to Calvary. And so when it come down, my God, to us presenting our body unto God as a living sacrifice, I got folks don't want to die. They don't want to die out to smoking. They don't want to die out to drinking. They don't want to die out to lusting. They don't want to die out, my God, to drugs. They don't want to die out, my God, to immorality. They don't want to die. My God, the point of uh, pornography. They don't want to die to this job. Folks sitting up in the church. My God, and they, they, they bound by these soap operas. They, uh, it's, it's, uh, soap operas are nothing but a bunch of whores and whoremongers. Come on and talk back to me. Yeah, y'all ain't saying nothing. And, and no doubt some of you sitting up in here that God needs to be delivered. Down to slip and look at, at, at this foolishness. You go in the hell. And the reason you want to do it is because your heart is not pure. But Matthew 5 and 8 has not changed. Blessed are the pure in heart because of all. Because they shall see God. I got when your heart is right. When your heart is pure. I got when your heart been washed. From the filthiness of the flesh. Folks sitting up in the church, black and white, prejudice, and saying that they love God. Let me tell you something. All you prejudiced devils going to hell. I don't care if you're plaid. I don't care if you're polka dot. I don't care if you're pinstripe. You can look like a patchwork quilt if you want. But if you prejudice in your heart, you're going to hell. We have been instructed to love our enemies. We can't just love them that love us. We got to love our enemies. And therefore, we got to love everybody. You got to love them that, that hate you. You got to love them that despitefully you and speak all manner evil against you falsely. Mind you falsely. They don't let what they be saying is true. You got to make sure that what they saying is a pack of lies. You live a life that's going to glorify God. Now, God, I like what Paul said. He, he said to the Philippian church, not that you have just obeyed in my presence only, but much more in my absence. My God, nobody has to follow you around when you got a genuine relationship with God. And all of these devils call themselves Christian and cussing you the profanity. You going to hell. You reckon Jesus used that language you used? Well, why are you using? Because if you are Christian, if you're born again, you got to have the mind of Christ. In other words, you got a, the nature of Christ. And so if he wasn't using that kind of language, why are you feel the devil's using it? Tommy slipped out. It didn't slip out. It came out from the abundance of the heart or the mouth speaking. And so when we give all of ourselves unto God, we give all of us to God. Oh, every ounce of my being. You know, like when Jesus got ready to wash the disciples' feet, he got to Peter. Peter said, no, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. He said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you won't have no part with me in this life, and you won't have no part with me in the life to come. Come on and talk to me. And Peter's got to think about it. Said, no, no, uh -uh, don't just wash my feet. You wash my hand, wash my head, wash my whole body. And see, God got to wash you from the crown of your hair to the sole of your feet. How God, God got to clean you up. He got to get sin out of your life. Come on and talk to me. You cannot grow in God with sin in your life. Spiritual growth is accomplished through spiritual intimacy. Spiritual intimacy is accomplished through self-denial or self-denunciation. According to Luke 9, 23, if any man come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his crawl daily, and follow after me. I got, you got to deny himself because in my flesh, in your flesh, dwell no good thing. Your flesh want to sin. My flesh want to sin. But I got to bring it subject. I got unto the law of God. I got to bring it subject. I got when all of the enemy come in like a flood. I got the, 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 the spirit of God. It 
said, lift up a standard. And this is why I'm just glad to be saved. I got it, I'm saved for real. When you got it like the Bible said, I got Jesus said the friendship of this world coming, but it had nothing in me. I got, I don't care what the devil bring. My God is not of God. It's not for me. Look at your neighbor say, it's not for you. My God is not for us. If it's not going to bring glory to God, it's not for us. Because we got to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God. We got to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. When I look at Matthew 6 and 24, the my Bible tells me that no man can serve two masters. Either he's going to love one, hate the other, cleave to one, and despise the other. But you cannot serve God and mama. You can't serve God. And you can't serve him and the devil. Come on and talk to me. In Romans 6, 16, he said, to whom you yield your members to, that's whose servant you are, to whom you obey. If you're sucking on cigarettes, you are a devil's child. And since I said that, this is a damnable teaching that people hear, that we're all God's children. He's telling a lie. He's telling a lie. He's a liar. I tell you what, if you don't believe what I'm saying, ask him. To show you in the Bible where it says that we're all God's children. And I'm going to tell you what Jesus said in St. John 8, 44. He looked at those Jews and he said, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. My God, so whatever the devil tells you to do, that's what you're doing. You can't obey, obey the devil and be a child of God. Let, let, let me hit the other devils. There are no Christian mingles. There are no e-harmony. Because God said, marry whom you, only whom you will in the Lord. You don't have to go to no club. You don't have to join no club. My God trying to find a mate. Women, you don't have no business on no e-harmony and any other kind of harmony. Because he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. Desperate. Ain't nobody on there but desperate folks. There's a, ain't nobody on there but folk with low self-esteem. Wild out on the prowl. Trying to find somebody. Don't you know you mixed up and messed up? But you got to know how to possess your vessel in honor and in sanctification. And God, you can't just be so hot that you want to lay down and sleep with anybody. Somebody that you don't even know anything about. Look at all these folks that wind up dead. Right now hooking up with somebody that they didn't know anything about. The devil does not come and say I'm the devil. Now let, 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 me, let me wake you up to reality. The devil does not. See we recognize Superman. By the blue jumpsuit. The red boots, the red cape, and that S on his chest. Now, if folks think the devil is walking around with a red jumpsuit on, with a pointed tail, with a goatee, and pointed horns on his head, we're walking around with a pitchfork. No, no. He might have a goatee, but he got a short tail and a briefcase. And he said, I'm Bishop Jace. He said, I'm, uh, I'm Joel Osteen. Come on, talk to me. He said, I'm Benny Hinn. Uh, Y'all ain't going to like me up in here, but I got to tell it. And I did that just to name a few. My God, because I would not be able to finish this message. My God, trying to talk about all of these false devils. <laughs> all of these greedy dogs. All they're concerned about is their quarter and their game. So he ought not to say that. Well, do you all tell us, but God, you shouldn't have put that in your Bible. And I did 56 and 10. He said, they're all dumb dogs. They're greedy dogs. After all they're concerned about is their own quarter and their own game. They're not concerned about the sheep. And people are, 
are all flocking after these devils. They are filing all of these rascals for, my God, on the way to hell. Go, go back to the second Peter 2. You start at verse 1 again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, no, not a few of them. Many shall follow their pernicious way. My God, that's Broadway. That's the one Jesus said, hey, in the end, at the straight gate. And the reason I'm telling you to end in at the straight gate for because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And then say, many there be that go down in there at come on and bless him up in here. Somebody, many gonna follow their pernicious way. Many gonna my God gonna opt out of the straight street and they gonna follow Broadway because the line preachers are telling you that it's okay. Can I just teach right here? Now look at here. They telling you, my God, that you can you can be saved without repenting. They are telling the folks today, you can be saved without repenting. Now, when I look at John 3, verse 3 and verse 5, it is said if you want to, if you, you think about it, it wasn't an option given. It said you must be born again. Now, when I go to Luke 13, Three and verse five. Except you repent, you said all likewise perish. So if you don't repent, if you don't turn, and the reason you'll repent is because you become convicted in your soul. I got that the lifestyle that you're living is not bringing glory to God. I got, let me tell you something. And I don't care if you, you know, folk call itself a Christian and got a pole in their house with their nasty self. I just dance before my home. I just do that nasty dance. You going to hell because God's eyes is in every place. My God, the only thing they want to do is not the Holy Ghost. It's the lust of the flesh. Let you have not been born again. That God has not penetrated that God into all of your heart. He has not permeated. The, the truth has not permeated all of your being. The truth shall make you free. The truth will cleanse you. Come on, talk to me. All these old nasty folk, they're doing their in and everything. What you say, Holy Ghost? You got all of these other people that saying that they're born again. And I'm not committing all sex. You can't make no baby with your mouth. You nasty devil, you. The purpose of sex was to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And these devil grazing in the grass, talking about they love the Lord, you feel the devil you. I don't care if you don't ever like it. You'll be surprised with all of this ungodliness and all of this filthiness that people are indulging in, that people are participating and Listen, all you got to do, my God, you go to Leviticus 20, Leviticus 18, and God, and you find out that all of this junk is going on. But somebody got to preach against this filthiness. Somebody got to stand up and cry loud and spare not. And the thing about it is, I want to tell you that you can be delivered. You don't have to indulge in that this stuff. My God, but God can, my God can, he can change you. You can become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to preach against it and, and, and leave you bound. I'm going to tell you that's a way out of it. When you look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, when the Bible tells us all of this stuff that people were participating in and practicing, look what it says. Know ye not 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're not born again, you're going to hell. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to hell. Somebody said, listen, preacher, every time I hear you, I hear somebody hell. That's where you're going if you don't com uh, uh, commit your life to Jesus Christ. And now let me tell you something. You cannot read uh, about what Jesus did, what he preached and taught, except to tell you about hell. Because this, it will people, they don't want to hear about hell. They want to think that it's okay to commit sin. And think that God is going to let them in because they go to church. Women think that because they, they, they breast is all exposed. They got a cross or a dove. My God stuck off in it with your nasty self. You cover up your breast. That cross don't deliver you. And I got news for you. All of the revels that run around there with that big old gold cross around their neck. The Bible, that was nothing glorious about the cross. The Bible says, curse is every man that hangeth on the tree. The cross that he says you're going to bear, my God, is the suffering of Jesus Christ. My God, commit your life to him. And no matter what the price, you're willing to pay the price. Jesus said, if you don't suffer with me, you won't reign with me. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. You got to crucify. You got to kill it. The desires of the flesh. Now look here. There it is again. Be not deceived. You cannot follow a snake and go straight. Watch this. Can I just quote Jesus? If the blind, you know, false prophets, false teachers, false bishops, false apostles, the leaders. Now, if you're following these folks, then he said, if the blind be leaders of the blind, they both, the one that's leading and the one that's following the false leaders, they both shall fall in the ditch. See that? Jesus said that. Somebody, nobody says he, he shouldn't say that because the ditch, he's talking about one that's on roadside. He's talking about hell. You're going to a place of punishment. You're going to a place of torment. But people want to feel like God going to overlook their sin. And let me tell you something. I preached some time back. Listen, the Catholic Church is the only church to have a bail bond serving for hell. We're going to get you out of hell. You pay the priest, you pay him some money, and, we, and his soul going to stay in, in, in purgatory until he gets good enough to go to heaven. I beg to differ with you. you telling a lie. You are deceiving for him. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You, you can't be born again after you're dead. When he said you must be born again, you must be born again while you're on this side. Except you repent, you can't repent while you're dead. So let me tell you something. Folks, keep your money. If they didn't live right on this side, they went to hell. The rich man didn't live right on this side. He went to hell. And he seen that he wasn't going to get out of there. Jesus was, that, that Moses wasn't going to let him out. So he wasn't about to bail him out of hell. So just like the, that, that drunk priest, that pedophile priest, he going to hell. And the Pope going too. Because they, they know what these devils were doing, but they still, they, they, were, they should have turned them in to the authority. So they shouldn't have did that. Yes, they should have. Because the law is not for the righteous man, but for the ungodly. For the disobedient, for the unholy and the profane folk. For the folk that are breaking the law. This is a, that they should have been turned into the police. They shouldn't have been done like a bunch of ants. You sprinkle a little bait on this pile, they move somewhere else. And you move this pedophile from one, one uh, 
Paris to the next, and he go over there and he, he mess up some other young boy life. But you're going to hell. You got to repent. Now look here. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. You can't be out there having sex out of wedlock and, and, and love the Lord. Because the, Bible, the body is not for fornication, it's for the Lord. No idolaters. That, that's the Catholic Church again. Because you're talking about hell, Mary, full of grace. It's not going to be hell, Mary, full of grace. It's going to be hell, but full of fire. How you know that? Because the rich man said, I'm tormented in this flame. And could you send uh, Lazarus that he'll go back and he'll warn my brother? I got five brothers. Tell him, don't come to this place. Don't come to this place because I'm tormented in these flames. I don't want them to come here. So no. If they won't believe Moses and the prophets, neither will they believe one come from the dead. Now God, so if, if they're not going to believe what the preachers that preach in holiness and righteousness and godliness and, and sanctification, they're not going to believe one come from the dead. Watch this. No adulterous. No effeminate. That's not a heaven for sissies. That's a hell for sissies. If they don't turn, they are going to burn. And I got news for you. I don't want to hear that fool and talking about, yeah, he's he talking about homosexuality. He homophobic. I ain't homophobic. I'm hellophobic. I don't want to go to hell because I won't tell the truth. I will not compromise. I'm doing you a terrible injustice. Not telling you that you're going, you must be born again. You must be what God created you to be. In the beginning, he created a male and female. Male and female created he them. He didn't create a misfit. He didn't create something that was mixed up or messed up. He didn't create a monster. You folks are mixed up and messed up. But I got news for you. Don't get mad yet, just yet. There's hope for you. But there's no hope for that one that went out there and had his organ chain. You didn't have a sex change. Your next stop is hell. You cannot be saved. I don't care what that man, the, the, the Azusa man, he, he, I don't know what he's doing now. He, like I said, he's just a bad of an eye from being a punk anyway. I mean, I got a friend. He, he, he's gay. He loved the Lord. You can't love the Lord and be gay. You can't love the Lord and love another man. You can't love the Lord, woman, and in love with another woman. You nasty devil's going to hell. But just stay with me. Don't get mad at me right now because I, I still love you. Hey, this is not hate speech. This is speech going to get you delivered. No abuser does not sell with mankind. Not thieves, not covetous, not drunkards, not revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of these folk doing these things. This is just a name of few. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this here. And such were, see that word, passing. Such were some of you. But now let's talk about our present state. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. God can wash you. My God, God can sanctify you. He can justify you. You don't have to continue in sin. If you continue in sin, hell going to be your next stop. But you can turn. Repent me to turn. It means to go in a different direction. Stop loving women. Women. Let every man have his own wife. A feminine type. Let every woman have her own husband. A masculine type. A another woman with two breasts. Both of y'all got D cups. Y'all can't be, you can't be a wife. He can't, that man can't be a, a husband. That woman can't be a husband. And that man, all y'all plumbing the same. Man, and one of y'all a man and one of y'all a woman. You, you devil's going to hell. But you can be saved. 
And just like he, he delivered these. My God, whatever you're bound by. But see, this is what we done got away from. That power in the word of God. My God, and the people are not going to church and experiencing the power. They go to church to hear something. My God, the, you know, the, when I was in the world, they had a song that said, tell me something good. And they're going to, to tell me something good, church. My God, don't say nothing about my mess. Don't say nothing about my lifestyle. Just tell me something good. I'm going to tell you something good. Jesus loves you. And Jesus want to save you. Why did you have to say he want to save me? Because he loved you. He want to save you. And if you keep in that life, living that lifestyle, you're going to die. And in hell, you're going to lift your eye. Bless him, somebody. The deception of religion. Everywhere you look, folks are embracing this stuff. Nobody want to say anything about sin. But you don't understand. Preacher, why don't you just tell them about the love? I'm, I'm going to tell you about the love of God. I'm going to quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That was the proof that he loved the world. And the son loved the world so much that he gave his life. And the reason God gave his son and the son gave his life that we might not perish, might not go to hell. There it is. That you might not go to hell. That he can deliver you from your sin. That your soul might be saved. Stop lying and saying that you love God. And when you don't have any intentions of being obedient to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All of this stuff is going on. All of these lies of oh my God are being disseminated. I don't have time. I have to come back with a part two. Because people need to know that these are the, the, the lies of deception. My God, that you can have salvation without repent. My God, that you can have faith in, in God without being obedient to what God word said. Come on, talk back to me. And this is the day and the time that we're living in. Folks are mixed up and messed up. And nobody want to say nothing about it. But God got somebody. My God, the, the Bible said he never left himself without a witness. But somebody got to stand up. Yeah, you tell them that Jesus loves him. And you tell them that he also, he want to save them. I got the proof that he loves you. According to Matthew 1 and 21, I got it said, Name shall be called Jesus, for he shall be called. He shall save his people from their sin. The people of God are saved, are delivered from their sin. They are not continuing in sin. That's a powerful statement, preach. Well, I just stand up on the word of God. When I go back to Ezekiel, the third chapter. Ezekiel the 18th chapter. Ezekiel the 33rd chapter. As I come to a close. The soul that's in it. It's not might die. They might not saying there's a possibility it might die. It shall. In other words, it's a fact. That the soul that sin it, it shall die. If it die in that sinful state. Hell going to be your next stop. The wages of sin, Luke 6 and 23, I mean Romans 6 and 23 have not changed. For the wages of sin is still there. The reward for sin is death. And it's not talking about a natural death. This is a spiritual death. The rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eye. That's a spiritual death. He died a natural death. Now, after this come the judgment, now he's going to give an account of every deed done in this mortal body. Somebody ought to bless him. This is why you better make up your mind that you want to serve God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. My God, let me tell you something. Uh, no, no. Don't, don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil deceive you. I got folks are backsliding. They're going back to the weak and the beggarly elements of the world because they're saying, my Lord, the layers is coming, but I got news for you in such an hour that you think not. He's gonna come, and guess what? He's gonna catch you with your work under, and he's gonna appoint you your portion with the hypocrites and with the sinner. Come on, bless the Lord, somebody. Let us stand.